Jonay Williams says that artists and entrepreneurs can be successful in their careers, but it starts with a strong business and legal foundation. Jonay Williams of J.A. Williams Law, welcome to Radio for Small Business. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Now, tell us a little bit about your education and your personal background, and then we'll get into the the hardcore stuff of law and business. (laughs) The nitty gritty. Okay, so I started off as a background vocalist a long time ago, and I was working for some acts and doing things in the local area in Georgia where I live. And I was doing quite a bit of songwriting and vocal performance and performing. And I was told that at some point that I would be credited and compensated for my work. Hmm. And that some point never came. And at the time, yeah, it was a little bit heartbreaking because my family is a musical family. My mom was a record promoter. I'm from Detroit. So we were Motown. It was that whole vibe. She was in the industry. And I grew up um, for a very long time. And so I was uh, told that I would be credited or compensated for my work. And that never happened. And from then moving forward, I didn't understand that I had some legal rights that were involved because I was too young to understand that. I didn't understand what my obligations were or what I could do. I just knew there was something inherently wrong with the fact that that hadn't happened. i had been told a lie and I did so much work. And I was also, because I was younger, I was also in school. So I was working doing my part-time job, how most young people do. And then I was going to school. And in addition to that, I was also performing at night and doing all of this work at night and songwriting. So fast forward, what I didn't realize is that that kind of led me into the idea that I wanted to just empower other people so that they wouldn't go through what it is that I went through. And I wanted to do that And I did that through various different ways. I had an event planning company for 11 years where I did artist events. I also worked as a manager. I worked Mm. at arts organizations as a director. Like I did so many different jobs. And what I realized was that I really wanted to know how is it that people use the law to actually protect their creativity Mm. versus provide a hindrance to their creativity. And I was going to ask you about that. Is being cheated out of those revenues, is that the catalyst of you becoming a lawyer to start to protect other artists? I think so. I think that I didn't realize it at the time when I went to law school, but what I realized after I started working at the entertainment litigation firm where I where I worked at after I graduated, I realized that wasn't my path. I didn't want to be on the side of when everything hit the fan. It was almost like I was getting that that kind of like muscle memory coming back of like (laughs) being exploited and, you know, just hearing all of these stories of other artists and other creative people who were getting exploited and then having to go and defend against that. I realized that there had to be another way and I didn't want to be on that side of the law. So I was like, okay, what is it that I really want to do? And I kind of realized that I wanted to be on the transaction side. I wanted to be on the prevention side. I wanted to help people really understand How is it that you actually use these tools in the law that's in place? How is it that you understand what those things are from your perspective and use them to empower you to be able to go out and do more in the world versus, you know, being restricted, doing less? Mm -hmm. I have a client right now who she met me after she signed a contract. She got dropped from a label and then they're kind of like holding her hostage with this contract. Mm -hmm. And it's just awful to see, you know, this young person who is so incredibly talented, not have rights to her intellectual property, not even have rights to her own name, not have rights to the songs that she created. Like, it's just really heartbreaking and how stressful that is that she can't even make a living because they have her locked down for like 12 years. Wow. For 50%. So it's just, this kind of stuff just needs to stop. And so... I realized that I wanted to be on the side of helping people understand how to not put their name on a contract that would exploit them in this way. And then also, if they're wanting to actually create businesses as someone who is a creator, because I believe that all small business owners are creators, you know, entrepreneurs are creators, how is it that they can take the law and use it in a way that can kind of like help them propel their journey? especially since the internet is such a crazy wild, wild west. Right. And the only thing that we have that's really ours is our intellectual property. So you said a lot of things there and I can relate to you <laughs> because I was in 
Urban Radio as a DJ between 1995 and 2002. Mm -hmm. And at third party, yeah. we'd hear about all these artists who were great artists that we know of. Something would happen in a conflict with the label, and all of a sudden, they can't even do business in their own name. So I want to ask, can you maybe break it down really simply for people who aren't in that industry about what a new artist needs to do to protect themselves from the big bad label? Mm, well, okay. So there's a couple of things. Number one is, is that there are some, at this point, because the music industry is kind of imploded, there are some labels that are not out here that mean no good, right? Okay. And they are out here to exploit, to exploit artists. But there's another side to it that you have to think about is the fact that labels are also struggling to survive and they're looking for how is it that we can, you know, if we're going to take all of our money and invest it into developing this artist and putting them out in the world, then we also deserve to get a kickback on what it is that we have done right. to, and in what we've invested to develop that artist, right? So there is two sides to the story, but the most important thing that you need to think of as an artist is Number one, don't sign anything unless you've had an attorney that is on your side review it. Most of the time, <laughs> what artists will do is they won't hire outside counsel because of whatever reason they can't afford it or they trust their label or whatever, or they just don't want to kill the deal. They're afraid. They get intimidated by the lawyer, the uh, label telling them, well, you're going to do all of that. We don't have time for that. They use a lot of coercion tactics to try to get artists to just kind of sign on the dotted line without having a review. Don't do that. Don't do <laughs> like, get some, no, just don't do it. Get somebody that's on your side that also has music industry experience to be able to look at these contracts and then say, okay, nope, X, Y, and Z, thus and so. With the understanding that with these contracts, there isn't a whole bunch of wiggle room for new artists, but there is some, especially because of the fact that artist development isn't as robust in the music industry as it was. Right. And most of the time they're expecting artists to come already developed. They're expecting artists to already come with an audience, come with a brand. And if you've done all of that stuff, then you are running your own business and you can't just go and have somebody just sign off on that mm -hmm. and then have somebody else own everything that you've been developed. Right. So because you see in the movies where these old school guys, like in the, the blues industry, jazz industry, old school soul industry, uh -huh. in the movies, they really glam it up and say, here, just sign this blank piece of paper and we'll put all the, mm -hmm. the details in it later. But that could cost you literally <laughs> millions of dollars, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and in a sense, they're exaggerating for the movie effect, but it's not that big of an exaggeration, <laughs> actually. I've had clients or people who I just knew in the industry come to me and say, yeah, you know, they just said, Go ahead and sign it. Don't worry about having anybody look at it. We're going to take care of you. It'll be fine. And I'm like, that is the number one, like, right. red flag <laughs> that you should have somebody review it. If they're like, oh, no, just go ahead and sign that. You ain't got to have nobody review it. That's the first thing you should be doing. <laughs> right. Because at the end of the day, so, even mm -hmm. though you're signing as an artist with a label, you and the label are not the same entity. You and the label are different no. business who are agreeing to do business no. together, right? You're two separate parties. You're 100% two separate parties. And so they have representation on their end and you need to have representation on yours as well. So mm. that's just a little bit about it. But then at the same time, you also think of that in terms of like everyone, not just artists, but also just standard entrepreneurs who are maybe like coaches or, you know, developing themselves in other ways and have other professions that are outside of the art. Everyone is, is a creator and everyone has intellectual property. And that is the thing that ultimately was just as important as owning the building at mm. this point, especially how we kind of operate now in this cloud kind of world where everything is online yeah. and your whole identity is pretty much out there on, in the world at, online. So you really have to be careful about what you do and just make sure that you're really protecting yourself. So Jonay, one of your customers or clients, I think you call them, Jonay gives us the ability to make bold and steady moves for our business. One, you normally don't hear artists talk about the industry as being a business themselves, but you obviously take care of them. When they come to you, what are a couple of things that you may help them do immediately to begin to form that solid legal foundation? Yeah, absolutely. When I work with my clients, because I have, like I said, I have entrepreneurs, I have artists, I have creators all these people who identify as in different ways. 
first thing that I usually do is I do a legal audit on their business. If they don't have one, then I encourage them that they set one up. Um, and if they do have one, then the first thing I do is do a straight up audit of their entire business and see where it is that they have legal hold. And then I kind of pull those together. I present those to them and I tell them what it is that I advise for them to do. And then we then get to work. And then the other thing that I do that I think that, especially with that particular quote, what I do with a lot of my clients is, is I work with them on their revenue growth. So if you're, because of the fact that I also am an entrepreneur, I also have a business background as well. When I look at my clients and they're telling me, because I understand from an artist's perspective too, because of the fact that a lot of times there are certain things that you don't want to do anymore, right? So if a client comes to me and they're like, look, I want to add $30,000 more to my bottom line, but I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that. Um, you know, and they're telling me the things that they're not really interested in doing. I usually can take those things and zero in on what it is that I think that they should be doing in order to actually make that revenue. And then what are the steps legally to, that they need to do to protect it? So those are some of the things that I recommend for people initially, just depending on how it is that they come to me. But I also know people who are just starting off just to give people an understanding of what they should be doing. You should be looking at your money coming in. So how is it that you're protecting the money coming in, a.k.a. your service contracts Mm. or your your artist contracts or whatever kind of contracts that you have in order to kind of put your services or your goods out in the world and bind people to paying you? So that's number one. You should have those. Then you should have a business entity. I do recommend that for people who are really serious or they have some assets to protect because you want to make sure that you have a shield between what you own personally and what your business actually has in terms of revenue and what it's bringing in, things like that. So I do recommend that you have a business entity. The next thing that I usually talk to people about is how is it that they are protecting their privacy? So if they're working with other people, let's just say you're working with web developers or you're working with interns or you're working with contractors like an assistant or someone like that, you want to make sure that you're protecting your business from that perspective as well, making sure that they can't distribute your information to a third party. You want to make sure that they're not able to take what it is that they've learned from you and then jump into the marketplace and compete against you. Like there's lots of different things that can happen. So you want to make sure that you have a contract with all of those people as well, or what they call a non-disclosure agreement, which basically says whatever it is that you learn, whatever it is that you get exposed to in my business, you can't do anything with that information. I was going to say those are three great steps, especially for someone, anyone getting started in business, whether they're an artist or an entrepreneur. Absolutely. So it's like you're protecting the money coming into your business. You're protecting the information going out. And you're also making sure that you protect your intellectual property. So registration is always a great thing. Registering your copyrights, registering your trademarks. So for example, the whole not doing things in your name is because those artists did not own the intellectual property rights, the trademark rights to their stage name. If you own it, (laughs) if you own the trademark to your name, then can't nobody tell you that you can't use it. But what they usually do is they sign that intellectual property over to the label. And then when they get into a dispute with the label, the label's like, well, I own your name, so you can't do anything with it. Right, right. So then they have to go... Right. So you remember that epi- that part of Tina, um, the... Uh, what's what love got, got to do with it? Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so you remember that part where she was in court and she's like, I want to keep my name. <laughs> like, you know, he can have everything else, but I want my name because I work too hard. For That's what she was talking about because he could have took her name too. And then she would have to do things under anime book or whatever other stage name she would have. And she was like, no, I spent 30 years building up my credibility and my artistry underneath this name, I want to keep it. Wow. And that's what she was talking about. I want to keep my intellectual property. Wow. Hey, Jonay, why don't you give the listeners a way to get a, at least find out more about you and get a hold of you just in case they want to get more? Absolutely. So if you want to learn more about my firm, you can come to jawilliamslaw.com. And what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to sign up and get onto my list and you'll get an awesome little free gift. That is the top two ways you can protect your brand online and beyond. And you will also be able to hear from me every single Friday 
because I'm always giving out free legal information just to help and empower other people who may not be ready for a lawyer, but they at least want to know what their options are when they get ready to. Gotcha. Jonay Williams with J.A. Williams Law. Thanks for taking your time out here on radio for smallbusiness.com. Oh, it was so great. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I hope it was helpful to your audience. 